morning, all. My name is Avala Olive Chemaka, and I'm presenting a design proposal of an architectural firm called Hexia Angle. This firm, for us to do an in-depth design and for us to deliver what the clients actually wanted, first of all, we had to do our research. We did our research on the particular spaces which this building will comprise on. We have our offices, we have our display galleries, and so on and so forth. We also did a site analysis of the, of the site, finding out, because our site is based is in Jigawa State, we did the rainfall analysis, okay? Find out the level of rainfall that the place will have to enable us to choose the perfect type of roof. We also found out the noise because our site is also in the middle of such a place where it has primary schools across the road and then the, a mosque. So we also delved deeper and did case studies. We learned the interrelationships between these studio rooms, the break rooms, and other spaces like the Paramount spaces, that's the offices and others. Moving on, we have major considerations for our design, which are accessibility, functionality, ventilation, and acoustic comfort. We, next slide, please. For our concept, we face a design problem of noise, basically. And we said that, okay, what we are going to do to tackle this noise is to use the perfect type of materials. The materials we chose for this design are fiberglass, foam padding, and then to reduce the noise from out external sources. Also, we chose an internal courtyard because we know that courtyards limit spaces, limit sound waves traveling. We chose it to reduce the noise from interior spaces. Our main concept is actually based on the principles of architecture by Vitruvius. Next slide, please. This, in this place, the honeycomb here, which is nature-inspired efficiency, helps us in the aesthetic parts. This is our, this right up here is our thought process behind choosing this honeycomb. The A stands for the form and the symbolism. It also signifies our strength and stability of the building. Then the last part, which is the connectivity and collaboration, also signifies the functionality of this particular floor plan. We're going to talk about the floor plan, starting from the, the ground floor. We have the entrance, given with the reception, and then towards the left hand side, we have um, the staircase leading to other floors. Immediately after the um, reception, we have the showroom, whereby the art, um, artistic models or the model of past works are being kept there, and then the, to show what the, um, the firm has been doing. Then we also have the, um, the relaxation area, and then we have the restroom behind. So going to the second floor, we have the courtyard there. The courtyard is basically for, um, to assist, to, to also um, assist on the ventilation and then the, you know, on the lightning. Then on this other side of the lobby, we have a lobby looks, this other side helps in lighting to assist the light coming in on the lobby. Then going to the first floor, we have um, um, our office, some offices, we have some studio rooms for, we have some offices and then some break rooms, some collaboration areas, and then that's where we located our CEO and the manager's office. So it doesn't have to be going to do too much climbing and all that. Next slide, please. So on the second floor, we made it, because it's an architectural firm, we, they made provisions for interns. So the second floor is probably, is just basically for interns. We have the studio for the interns and then the offices beside the studio. So that whenever they are working in the studio and then they feel like asking one or two questions, they walk into the offices and then we have the collaboration area whereby they talk and then give instructions and they go back to work. Then we also have the restroom behind and then the brick and then brick room at the other, the right hand side towards the end. So on the third floor, that is the last floor, we also have the, this now is mainly used by the workers and then the architects in the, in the, um, in the firm. So on the right hand side, we have the larger studio where most of all the architects, the major architects used to do their work. And then you can see it has a little bit of space where they can work and then, okay, and then behind just, on that same floor, behind it, we have the um, printing room whereby they, after they have done their, the work, they print it and, and move on. So now we we'll go to the, these are, these are our elevations, the south and the north elevation. You can see the design from our concept being integrated in the, in the facade of the building. So this is also the elevation. Next, next slide, please. 
So we move on to our side details. You can see coming, we have two entrances, or both on the um, horizontal and the vertical area. Then we have the parking spaces for both angles, this area and this area. This, this um, um, on the left hand side, the top left of this thing is for relaxation, whereby while others have been doing, while other things have been uh, done in the firm, other people that came with maybe relatives or children can just stay there, relax while they wait for whoever has gone into the firm to do one of the things. So this we have a short clip of the our uh, work. Thank you. We are here to walk you through the idea behind um, the design of a technological innovation center. In today's um, rapidly growing technological landscape, it's only wise that institutions begin to adapt technological learning into their curriculum. This idea was the bedrock of our design. Before we started the design of this building, we um, studied other designs of existing buildings similar to this one. But then we noticed that the common problem with these buildings were the fact that these spaces were not really convenient enough for um, the supposed users. So this problem was what was the main problem we tried to solve in our own design. We tried to ensure that the spaces were um, cross-ventilated. But then this entire project would not have been possible without a proper site analysis because we intend to design a building that will stand the test of time and be sustainable. We zoned the site into three parts. Into the, main, the place for the main building, the car park, and the garden. And we do this because relaxation and connection to nature will bring about strong thoughts and a clear mind. And we help to innovate our mind because we will not only connect only to technology, but to connect to nature as well. The concept for this design is basically about centered on the form and the zoning of the building. So the form was generated by trying to create an articulated plan. And this articulated plan helps to maximize ventilation and lighting into the space. We also incorporated a courtyard into the building. So it helps bring more of lighting into the structure and also helps um, create a sense of closeness to nature in the building. So this is the site plan. As my colleague said, the site plan was zoned into three spaces. That's the main building, the car park, and the garden. But this is the floor plan. As you can see, the form, um, creates, the form looks like it has like so many edges, which is the articulated plan. Then the access the main, it has one main access through the bottom over there. Then once you get into the main entrance, you, main entrance, you get to a concourse, and there's a reception is closed there, which can direct you around. Also, we use an activity-based zoning in the structure, in the sense that when you walk into the plan. You don't necessarily need to stress yourself to find spaces because the spaces are zoned in a way that is easily accessible to the users. Then this is the roof plan. As you can see, we covered the courtyard with a skylight because um, the this thing, the courtyard is basically for lighting. We had an idea that the skylight can kind of like be controlled to be open. And these are the elevations: the south, east, west, and do not. Okay. Designing flexible, adaptable, and sustainable environments can help in collaboration, creativity, and total well-being of the digital economy of our current society. The TIC project, the Technological Innovation Center, helped in creating spaces for trainings and other innovation activities, which can help in solving problems like our digital or our digital uh, degrade and so many other stuff in the society so far. So we've seen that the need for digital advancement and technological in innovations can be carried out through this. As we've seen in the facade, as the building was made to resemble a circuit board. And so far, this is the Technological Innovation Center. Thank you for listening. Good morning, stars. Good morning, class. 
My name is Fidelis Ugu Prince. Um, in Group A, we are here to present a beachfront hotel. So here is the table of contents of um, the work we did, the brief overview and certification, introduction, site analysis, design concepts and development, then the design details and visualization. Here are the profile of uh, the group members. Okay, um, this is the literature review. Here it says that beachfront hotels are popular destinations for tourists and travelers seeking relaxation and leisure. So here is the site plan showing how the site, the, the building is uh, zoned in the given site we, we got from Google Map. Yeah, coming to the concept developments, we actually um, integrated human and natural system to this design, which has to bring that, uh, create that harmonious relationship between man and the natural world by, we, by incorporating natural elements, such as real species, materials, and other natural elements to ensure that, that healthy, to ensure that healthy habitation and relationship between man and its environment. We have two glorified entrances to our, uh, our building. And then in, in the center of the, floor, uh, of the floor plan, we have the reception and then the central core of the building. We have some elevators at the back. Then in the right, in the left corner of the form, we have our, um, we have a multi-purpose hall that's for events. Then this is our floors, our typical floors. We have um, a total number of 13 floors and 12 suspended floors. Um, here is our south and our north elevation. Here is the bird eye view of our site and also the front view of our site. This is the interior perspective of the site and, and interior of the, um, of the reception area and also the interior for the um, bedrooms.